Okay, pellet preparation. I think that getting your pellets right is really important whenever you're going fishing um, on any commercial. And some of them take more time than others to get right and prepare. So I do it a really, really easy way because I personally think that the way you prepare your pellets makes a big difference to how they come out, but it's dead easy to do. So first of all, if I'm gonna soften some pellets, obviously if I've got hard pellets, um, I'll look at that in a, in a different video, but this is mainly for softened pellets, is, um, if I'm being honest. I like softening up different types of pellets. I'm a big fan of having softened four mils. Now, obviously this is whenever I'm going to a venue where I can use my own pellets, I can choose my own pellets. If I'm going to a venue and it's their pellets, I'll obviously try my hardest to get some of their pellets beforehand. Often if it's a venue I go to regularly, I might do that, but if I can choose, I'm always looking at Fin Perfects for my four mils, and it's dead easy to do. The reason I would use softened four mils is I love using them maybe as like a little bit of an extra on a method. Sometimes I like to loose feed an odd softened four mil when I'm skimmer fishing. There is a lot of times when I'll use softened four mils, so I'll always take them as an option, like typically like half a bag, something like that. But four mils take a little bit of extra time to get ready. You can't just do them on the morning. So what I tend to do is last thing at night, I'll just do my four mils. I'll try to, if it's cold, uh, I'll put them in the fridge. But if it's, if sorry, if it's not cold, if it's hot, I'll put them in the fridge. But if it's cold, I'll literally just leave them on the garage floor like it is today, nice and cold. So take your four mils and put them into a bucket. Now you'll notice for both these demos, I'm using buckets. And I think buckets are so important because what I don't want is an inconsistency on my pellet in terms of how much water a pellet gets or doesn't get in a bait tub. When you use a bucket, it's a nice big flat surface area. And what it actually does is it allows all the water to cover the pellets and almost like drain down together so you get a nice consistent pellet. I think that's really important. If I'd have put them all like in this bait tub and say half filled the bait tub, then put the water on and then the pellets try to over expand. The ones at the bottom end up as a mush. The ones at the top haven't got enough water. You don't want that. You want a nice consistency of your pellet. So just gonna take some water here. Now, all I'm gonna do when I'm doing four mils, and it's really important, I just like to get the water. So basically it covers the four mils because, just give that a little bit of shake around there. So like if I'm tapping these down, I wanna make sure all four mils are covered. They're not quite covered. So. Let's just put a bit more in here. Don't, the pellets are really hard and dense, so they need to be covered all the way through with water. So literally just patting them all down to make sure they're basically all covered without having any excess water. All right, so if I was doing half a bag, that's typically how I do them. And then literally all I do is just pop another bucket on top. And all that does is it just it stops those pellets like over expanding like blowing up on top of themselves obviously the weight of the bucket stops them picking up and they just will end up being a little sort of solid clump in the bottom of your bucket all right so that's what i look to do i i own three buckets and i always do me bait prep like this when i'm when i'm preparing to go anywhere and then on the morning so when on I don't like to do micros the night before. I try to avoid doing anything the night before. I'm always a bit nervous that uh, something might go off. I know that it won't in winter, but I just got this thing in my head where I like nicely fresh done bait. I don't like bait that's um, been done too far in advance. So what I'll do is with my micros, I'll get up on the morning and I'll do my micros. Now, of course, as we know, soften micros, brilliant on a method, pellet feeder, banjo feeder, Brilliant when you're fishing for skimmers, for a pole, cad pot, tapping in micros for F1s. There's so many benefits to doing uh, micro pellets. And for me, when I get the choice, like there's a lot of venues where you can choose your own pellets. I think your pellet choice is very important. And I always go for two types. I've got Fin Perfect 2 mils, and I've got some S Pellet Feed pellets here. Now, the reason I use these two different types of pellets is, is, is quite interesting, mainly because this is your standard coarse fishing pellet, all right? It's not really got um, a, a massive amount of oil in it. And what tends to happen with these pellets is, you know, they can be quite tacky at times. Sometimes they can be a little bit tacky. Sometimes they might change slightly and be a, not so tacky. So I've sort of got a, a consistency of what I can expect from this pellet, if you like. 
and it's something that I know every single coarse fish eats. So I always like to use these as they are. Now, the, thing, the reason I've brought these into the mix is this is a much higher grade of pellet and a much more consistent pellet. So if I get a few out of my hands here, right, these have got a higher, sort of like a slightly higher fish meal content, a slightly higher oil content, not like a trout pellet, but they're a much higher grade of pellet and they blow up consistently. But interestingly, these pellets don't bind very well. Okay, so if I use these on their own, I'd have to use something with them to get them to bind together. But I love it because what they do is they mean that it doesn't make this pellet too sticky. So when I'm using it on a method, I'll typically go for like two thirds of the uh, Fin Perfect. So we'll put some Fin Perfects in here. Right, two thirds of a bag of Fin Perfects like that. And then this is actually a bigger bag. So like a, a half as many again, of the S pellets, all right? So you can see when I mix them together like this, you can see I've got a, a, a sort of a blend of two thirds of the uh, Fin Perfect and a third of the S pellet. And what that does is it makes my pellets brilliant because I can squeeze them together really tight on a method. They go boom, down to the bottom, get to the bottom in one piece. But because those S pellets don't bind, they just allow everything to start to break up and you get a beautiful breakdown on your method feeder, which is why I combine the two. I think that's really important. Now, if you want to add any flavour or anything, this is the time to do it to your pellets, all right? So what I often like doing is I always think to myself, do I want to put anything in my pellets? Am I happy with my pellets how they are? There's loads of different things you can use. You could use a bait booster. Look, I've got an orange one here. I love the Scopex bait booster. But something I am a big fan of is making my bait sweeter. I've learned that sweeteners are so good in your bait. So I've got some washed out liquid flavor here. Now this is like, you can't fail with this to overdo it. Like you don't have to be like, oh no, just a little bit. Literally, it's nice and sweet, but you can't ruin it. So in the winter particularly, I've learned in the winter, they fish love sweetness. They really love sweetness in the bait. I will literally give it a massive glug in there. You know, it's not a particularly expensive um, uh, product that is the, is the liquid flavors. They're designed to be used a bit more in bulk. So I really will put loads in there and then I will add my water. Now, the same thing as when I'm doing the four mils, just give them a nice stir. And what I'm looking to do is just fill this up. So when I tap this down with water like that, if I tap all the pellets down, so you can imagine all that flavors nicely distributed, I want that water to be just showing on the top. There we go, that's the perfect one. So like it's just almost lapping on the top of the pellets. That's it, like that, all right? And then I do exactly the same thing. I will literally put my bucket, which will have my ground bait mixed up, on top. So I'll have my three buckets like that ready to go. This will have my ground bait in it for a nice bit of weight. And everything just holds my pellets in there, stops them over expanding. We'll take a look at them when they're ready. But that is how I get the perfect pellets for fishing. So these have been sat for a good couple of hours now. Let's take a look, take the bucket off. So that's how you can expect your, your micros to look. And you can see there, absolutely solid wedge. So if I get my hand underneath, break them all up, I'm left with, beautiful smelling by the way, the perfect micros. And actually it's hard to see the S pellets within them, which you know when you see the color difference to start with, you think to yourself it's going to be big but you can see when i squeeze i can squeeze really tight and it'll squeeze on a method no problem look but watch how i can just literally break it all back down to pellets so that for me is the perfect pellets for like method feeder banjo feeder i love swollen pellets when i'm uh, skimmer fishing as well so they've come out great let's take this other bucket off there's the fours you can see them all nicely blown up. And again, just get your hands underneath them. You can see, look, there's still a little bit of water there because it's been two hours. That's why I said I like to do it overnight. But you can see how the pellets have all swollen up nicely. Then they're probably like halfway through soft now. So another couple of hours and they'll be perfect. You could see how they were. They've not ruined or over expand. Whereas if I just left them like that, they would have done. So 
that's why I do those the night before. But you can see perfect, it's such an easy way of preparing your pellets. And then just chuck them in your bait tubs when you get on the bank. But you'll have the perfect pellets every time.